What is good, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Get With It. Uh, I am your host, Camille Buxita, aka Killa Cam. And I'm your co-host, Jayani Smith, aka J Money. And welcome to the podcast for everything women's hoops. Hey, we got a, we got a lot of stuff to get into. We went through the WNBA draft, everything that happened last week, but you know, we gotta get it going and, and start, you know, with everything that's gone on in the I would say the last 24 hours. Um Honestly. which has been uh, you know, we had planned to come in here and talk about all the Met Gala looks and all the fun things that happened last night, but unfortunately. Um, something else more pressing and, and upsetting happened and, you know, a leaked decision by our one of the Supreme Court justices was, I mean, that's never happened in American history, first of all. Let's start there. Um, a leaked decision was, you know, basically unveiled saying that they're likely to overturn Roe versus Wade uh, legalizing abortions in our country. And, I mean, it is just something that I, I don't think I ever expected to see in my lifetime since before my lifetime, these issues were addressed. Yeah, I honestly would say that I'm probably at a loss for words because the only word that I have is, or the first word that comes to mind is disgusting. Because mm. um, I just can't imagine how, for the most part, it's mostly men um, mm. that are making these decisions over women's bodies. Like, I don't even think that should even be an option. Mm. Um, and so, I mean, at this point, I would say... At, at such a young age, I honestly feel like I'm exhausted of like living through these like historical moments, like Jesus yeah. Christ, like how many? Um, mm. And in the past couple of years too, but I'm truly at a loss for words um, yeah. at this potential decision. Like it hasn't even been finalized and mm. I don't even know how to feel. I think what's crazy is one, again, a leaked draft of a decision. It's never happened in the history of, of, of our country and our, and our modern society or government. Um, here in America. And so, um, one, how does that even happen? Um, you know, and two, how are we at a point still where that is, um, I would say, a governable, uh, you know, thing, right? Like, how are someone um, predominantly older men, you know, how are they to tell me, you know, how I, what I can and cannot do with my body? And not only that, but we are already one of the countries with high, the highest amounts of homelessness, crime, et cetera. Um, a, a lot of unwanted children that are not cared for in our current system, in our current system. And now you want to overturn something that protects the women's right, a woman's right to really choose, you know, should she or shouldn't she? Because here's the other problem. You have a lot of instances where someone obviously gets pregnant unintentionally and they are not within their means to raise a kid or to That's finance the most important part. And, mm -hmm. and I think I saw a really good, uh, I mean, just a perfect, I would say, like summation of it all. A tweet from Jen Richards was said, I've never met a pro-life person who was actively doing anything to help systemic access to medical care, education, or surf social services for poor mothers and, unwant and their unwanted children. And I think that is just, you know, it, it's so true. Have we ever seen anyone, you know, who is on, you know, the, in that decision making room, in, in that position, in their that stance, ever do anything to to work towards a, a universal health care system for here for us? I, I, we just that doesn't exist. And so, how in the hell are we still in a point where, oh, well, because we think X, Y, and Z, you can't do this? You know, that's the the, the train of thought we're we're in. And so, how? It's, it's, it's flabber. I don't even know. I don't have words. Um, it's crazy to, to think about that. That's, you know, where we're at. Well, that's the thing. Like I, of course, like once a, a child is born, you want to, you want to be able to provide for that child or give it the care that is necessary. But for so many people or the, the argument of pro-life, it's like, well, what about after that life mm. exists? Then what are we doing? Nothing. Mm. Oh, we don't care. Like, do is it the child or the life that we care about or is it the control that is more mm. so like your focus and being able to have that because if it was if we're pro life then let's make sure that we have like you said like universal health care mm. better education um you know in our country access yeah. to you know food like there's so many places in our country that currently exp experience food droughts like they don't have mm. access to good grocery stores or mm. accessible you know healthy food options like there's just so many other things after a child's life or mm -hmm. after they're given life 
you know, that should be focused on that just completely goes out the door once, you know, the the woman gives birth. And the thing about it is, is that we've already seen it happen. Like how many times do we have to relive history just because you make abortion illegal doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. So now exactly. you're going to see way more situations where, you know, women may, you know, God forbid, pass away trying to get an abortion done mm -hmm. illegally. The child may not live through that. Like there's just so many other things that have to be considered in that situation. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, I won't even say they're not being considered. They're just blatantly being ignored at this point, which is just, mm -hmm. it, it saddens me. It's honestly, truly disheartening and disgusting. I know. And, and we felt we, we needed to talk about this, you know, because how um, dystopian in American does it feel that on a night where the rich are really just dressing up in costume and, and we're sitting on our couches, you know, analyzing and judging. We have the fate of our abilities to do what we want with our bodies is being actually taken away from us. Um, and we're working 50 years back in time, actually walking 50 years back in time. So it is crazy and mind boggling to think that that's the point we're at um, as a society where we're still even talking about these things. Um, but you know, I think now is the time for us to use our voices, use our platforms to get loud, to have conversations like these and, and, you know, find what we can do within our, our legal system and our, in our personal, you know, um, communities, governments, et cetera, to, you know, prevent and or stop, which in whatever way we can, um, get this from happening or, you know, funding different organizations that are helping, um, those uh, services still, you know, be done. Because I, I do believe that although this will strike it at a federal level, the states will still have the opportunity to govern the jurisdiction to, to create their own legislation um, individually. But you're going to see, and here's the other kicker, I was talking about this earlier. I mean, yes, I, I'm fortunate enough where I could go out of state, right? And go get a procedure done. What if it, the out of state, any out of state procedure is not covered under your local health insurance so so what if you, you can't know, afford that exactly what if you can't even and drive mm, to the state over exactly. to get that done like exactly. none of that stuff is considered exactly so i mean use this as a call to action i'm sure everyone already has in their individual ways and i'm hoping so for our listeners but um let's do what we can to to prevent this from happening and from helping these services to still be accessible to the majority majority of women that you know um won't be able to uh, ha you know, have those services to, um, at their at their leisure, and and not only that, I think the scariest part, and like especially talking to the W like about the W, and like this platform's all about the W, is that I think LGBTQIA plus um, rights are next, right? I I think um, in that same draft decision, I hadn't have a chance to to fully read it through. I I do believe one of the um, open the same sex marriages um, cases was also discussed, and so you know, are we walking that back? Is that's what's coming next? Because it feels like it, right? Like we've made all this momentum and we made all this and, and and what does it cost you it's really cost it costs no one anything it's ha people's happiness you're just purely taking away happiness and you're taking away um you know our abilities to choose what we do for ourselves it just it it makes no sense yeah absolutely and then when you talk about like with the league and just you know the Met Gala going on at the same mm -hmm. time as all of this like it really makes you think about how hard it is to you know, celebrate, you know, these things that are going on at the mm -hmm. same time that we're also trying to process these things. Like, yeah, we just um, witnessed like the first African-American Supreme Court justice mm -hmm. to be ruled in. And then, you know, something like this is happening, not simultaneously, but like right after one another. But mm -hmm. when you talk about like the the league and sort of like its impact on the league and a lot of the players that you know, are in the league and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know, we're about to go into the season. I just think about how heavy it probably weighs on their mm -hmm. heart as well, because so many of the players are such advocates for not only the players and themselves within the league, but just society in general. Mm -hmm. Like they are, all, they have been at the forefront of fighting for equal rights and for mm -hmm. justice of all people. And so, you know, whether it's Black Lives Matter, you know, mm -hmm. what was that, two years ago? Mm -hmm. um, and now this heading right into the season, like, you know, we're, you know, revving up and getting excited for, you know, play season play mm -hmm. and everything. And there's so many things that they have to be thinking about, like, yeah. in addition to being athletes and how can we kind of push the envelope and 
and further advocate and be a voice for those that don't have a voice. Yeah, I'm excited to see, you know, what the W does. They've always been the forefront of leaders of social change and social justice. So I think we're going to see some more of that this summer. Um, it is unfortunate that we're still at a point where they have to do these things and they can't just focus on basketball, but they are the leaders um, in the sports world, in the entertainment world, and and they're becoming leaders in this country, as we saw with Kelly Loeffler um, in that uh, Senate race a few years ago or two years ago. So, um, you know... <sighs> Heavy, heavy heart, you know, going into this conversation, but we are really, really excited for the start of season this week. And I can't believe it's here. Here this feels fast, like it's I know. Been, feels like it's been ages, but it also feels like it's been a minute. I don't know how that happens, but it does. The girls, <laughs> <It's>, we move. <laughs> That's probably how they feel too. <laughs> I know. I'm like, where's my, is it 5 p.m.? Where's my drink? I need that right now to have this conversation. Honestly, we might have to start doing that, like a little bit of tea, cocktail or something. Yes. Like, yes. With the podcast. Hey, yeah. Exactly. These these episodes launch on Wednesdays. We can make a little wine down Wednesdays, get a little glass of wine. Pour yeah. It tell we, our <laughs> listeners, pour up with us. Pour a glass, please. <laughs> yep. Please. And, and do it now. Might as well. We're going to start it right now, actually. Get your glass, get a cup of wine. Let's talk some basketball. Let's talk some WNBA hoops. Um, one of the things that I'm really, really excited about uh, this year is just how many new teams we're seeing, a lot of new stacked teams, a lot of new personalities on one team. And I think, you know, at the top of that list is For LA, sure. right? You've got, I mean, so many powerful players and Liz and Shanae and NECA and Kennedy Carter and Jordan Canada and Lexi Brown all on one roster. I mean, the list goes on and on. You know, Jay, how do you think this team's going to really mesh together and how is Derek Fisher as a coach, you know, going to help them mesh together? I'm really excited to see how how they build that team chemistry and also how fast, you know, they're mm -hmm. able to build that team chemistry. Like you said, like there are a lot of star-studded players on that team. What better city for them to be in in LA than, L than in LA? Mm -hmm. um, but... I'm really rooting for them to really mm. see, you know, how they bring all of those different personalities and all of the different talents and how they're able to like play off of each other and really hone in on like what each player's strengths are and how, you know, the other players can kind of complement that with their strengths as well. So I will say the one player I'm really looking forward to seeing from that squad is Kennedy Carter. Um, Definitely. I feel like she's going to have a huge breakout season um, this year with that team. She's surrounded by people that I think can really give her, you know, that, that support and have, she has vets alongside of her um, to really, you know, speak to their experience as well as some, some, some new players on the team as well. So um, I'm excited to see what's in store for Kennedy. Definitely. Definitely. And I think Jordan Canada too. I feel like she's a guard that has played under, I mean, Sue Bird, one of the best, you know, we've seen in a really long time. And she's going to get a uh, her moment to shine now, I think. An L.A. kid from you played at UCLA. She's back in her, back in her home. playground. Uh, back home, exactly. And I think she's just going to take off. I've been her her number one fan for a few years now. Um, understandably so. She she just hasn't had that starting opportunity behind Jewel and, and Sue in Seattle. But I think now is her chance and her moment. She's going to help this team um, really take them far. And and not only that, she's got Christy Tolliver to play with. I mean, another one of the greatest point guards we've ever seen. So um, it's going to be a good year for LA. I have a feeling. Yeah, I'm super excited to see what they do out West. Um, another thing, just talking about like, you know, new players and new opportunities. I mean, I had to take a breath because yesterday was absolutely, I mean, like obviously through camp and everything, but yesterday was insane with the amount of players um, and especially rookies too that, that have been waived. And I know we talk a lot about, you know, expansion and whether that be team expansion or uh, roster expansion, but let's get into, you know, some of, some of this news recently with, yeah. with the weight, the player waves. Yeah, I mean, we just saw, uh, you know, two, what I would say, great picks. You know, Lisa Kinane and Reina Perez waved from Seattle. Um, a first-round pick in Maya Hollingshed waved from um, Vegas. It's it's been, it's been a tough few days, I would say, for a lot of the young players in this league who are, are recently drafted players in this league. I wouldn't even say young, um, just really joining. Um, and it really shows us the reality of where we're at, right? Like 
just 12 teams, 144 roster spots. Like, that's it. And we're seeing the effects of that. And and I feel like it just shows us how much in need we are for a level of expansion. And I think I, I mentioned it, and um, you know, I was mentioning it to Jay, but uh, Christina Williams had a really good thought, which was, you know, how, do, what, and before we even talk about expanding the league in terms of teams, how about expanding rosters? I um, thought that was a really good thought because it's a lot easier to do um, from a CBA perspective, from a money perspective. I know starting a team in a new market is way easier said than done. Right. Um, but, you know, the roster spots is, is a good starting point because we just don't want to be in a position where we're losing young talent. Losing out on talent. Because they're just, the business of it does not allow them to shine in that moment. Yeah, um, I'm really looking forward to, you know, what the league may have in store. Cause I will say like the girls are not taking their foot off their necks. Like Mm-mm. every opportunity, you know, they get, they definitely let them know. So I'm really interested in seeing, you know, how the league responds to that. Mm-hmm. Um, because what's most important is being able to retain that talent. Like, like you said, mm-hmm. um, you know, with Elisa and Raina, like coming off of an elite eight appearance mm-hmm. first, you know, then getting pit, then getting drafted and, mm-hmm. and getting waived before the season even starts. Like, that is top caliber talent right there that you're missing mm-hmm. out on. And so I'm really interested in seeing, you know, how the league responds and being able to compete this. Cause we want to keep the league competitive. Yeah, um, that's what makes it so much fun. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing, to seeing how, how they respond. Yeah. And hopefully and think, soon. Yeah. A hundred percent. And like we saw with athletes unlimited this past um, winter, you know, there's a lot of talent, like not even rookies, even some older players that just really do have the ability to play in this league still. Um, and, and deserve spots. But, you know, unfortunately, like we mentioned with the business of it all, just they don't exist. So how do we, um, you know, how does the league, you know, help amplify that and change that for the future? And I think, you know, what Christina mentioned was a really good point. Um, it's some, it's an easy starting point um, from a discussion standpoint. And I'm sure it's something that the a conversation that will be had um, in those rooms, you know, moving forward. And, um, and I hope they do because, again, there's so many great players um, and, you know, we love – to, you know, retain that talent and see them play. And, and you know, like so many players have been waived in the past. We didn't see them for a few years and then they come out of come nowhere back. and they're shining. You know, you know, what if they had been shining those extra years where they were, you know, maybe just bounced out of the league? Um, how would they build from a marketing perspective, from a, from a market perspective, et cetera? So there's just like so much, I think, that could be done um, that it could help, you know, in terms of really expanding that roster list. Yeah, and then in talks of like, you know, how competitive the league is and how we want how competitive we want it to continue to be, it's early on. The season <laughs> hasn't officially started yet. But we gotta put it on record. Mm-hmm. Who are you going with for your final your final picks? All right, I'm gonna do my little like what what do they do on TNT? Uh, you know, Ernie Johnson's got the little sticky notes. I'm gonna just my invisible sticky notes on the phone right here. Um, although I don't want to, so I'm glad I don't have that because every year, I kid you not, the last two years, the person, the team I call to win that year wins the following the year. year. So after they that. lose out bad. So I remember I called Chicago two years ago and then they won last year. So wait, <laughs> who was your pick last year? Uh, who did I? I think I picked Connecticut last year. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I picked Connecticut last year. So hey, Connecticut... This year, I, I just given my track record, I, I'm not going to say them because I don't want to jinx them. But, you know, given my track record, I, you know, well, I'll put that on record a little bit that, hey, I've got the maybe I've got a little bit of juju that, you know, not the next, not the, the year I say it, but the following year it happens. But um, yeah, in coming. terms of this year, I mean, man, there's so many good teams. Um, I really like Vegas. I think Vegas has a has a good um, system back in place um, with. Uh, everything they have. And I'm excited to see what Becky does with that team um, in her first year. Uh, I think Phoenix has a lot of potential adding Tina Charles, um, you know, unfortunately missing Brittany Griner, which, you know, sending her all the love and prayers possible to hopefully, you know, get Bring her, her home soon. Um, we had some good movement in that case today. So, you know, again, like we mentioned, really sending a lot of thoughts, prayers and love to her and her family and, you know, hoping to get her home soon. Um, but I really like that Phoenix team. And then, you know, beyond that, you can never count Seattle out if you've got Brianna Stewart on the floor, I think. Um, it's Sue's last year. I think they're going to be really hungry to win that for her. Um, and, 
you know, I, I think I, I got to put Connecticut in there too. I think I mentioned them briefly, but I got, I just mentioned, mentioned like a third of the league. But that just shows, <laughs> I'm going to say you listen to every team. <laughs> I'm very indecisive. You can't tell. Um, but I think Connecticut just is stacked, man. Like they've got Courtney Williams back. I think John Quell Jones is still one of the best players in this league. I mean, if not the best player. It's something um, in the water. She's from the DMV. Something. Well, she's yeah. from the Bahamas, but she's from the DMV. Hey, she's also from the Caribbean. So hey, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, she's from the Bahamas listen, originally, Bahamas, but you know. but um, you know, I think exactly the Connecticut team's really, really uh, a good one to watch. And then okay, I'm not putting them in my finals, but I'm just saying I'm excited to watch them. Washington, I mean. You've got Elena Deladon back on the floor. EDD that, is that, back. That is, she's, y'all be scared. I'm sure you are because that is one unstoppable player. And if you combine her with Maisha Hines Allen, who's really developed so well as a post player in this, in this league, um, you know, Intosh. it's going to be, it's going to be in Tosh and you got Shatori. I mean, oh, and Alicia Clark, Alicia Clark. Yeah, Alicia Clark. Back. Yep. Um, I mean, man, that team is. That team's gonna be nice too. So yeah, I, they're I gonna be. be I feel like they're gonna be a sleeper. Like people are gonna sleep sleeper. on. Yeah, call don't be biased. One. We know you're yeah. from Washington. You don't need to be biased. <laughs> um, okay. Can we bring the ship back from 2019, please? <laughs> Thanks, management. <laughs> run it back. Run it back. Run it back. All right, those are my picks. Since I just named half the league, now you're up. All right, what are your picks for the final. Well, you already touched on all of mine, but I'm gonna just go ahead and call them out just so that we have it on record when they do come and win. Okay. I don't. Okay have just two for my finals picks, but I got three. So we got a toss up between, I got Connecticut, um, Vegas, and Phoenix. Okay. I know Phoenix is coming back hungry after last year's final, so I'm not counting them out, but those are my three picks um, okay. with the toss up for them. So I'm with we'll it. see. Huh? We'll see. Yeah, right? Like, we're, listen, we are both on the same wave, except I'm more indecisive than you because you at least <laughs> knocked it down to three and I had like five. So, it's yeah. okay. It's okay. It's all good. You touched on all mine. I'm just, I want everyone to win. You know? Period. Yeah. We just want to see a good game of basketball. That's all we really care about. That's all we really care about. That's all we really care about. That's all I care about. Yeah. Um, and, and speaking of good basketball, we're going to have a lot of really good games this opening weekend. We're so excited. I think, um, me personally, just because, you know, I'm a I'm a New I'm a New York. Well, I'm a I'm a transplant New Yorker. Listen, I'm not gonna sit here and say I'm a real New Yorker. I'm not. <laughs> but I am excited for Connecticut um, at, at Brooklyn and Barclays. That's gonna be a fun game on Saturday. Um, but I think the game I'm most excited for this entire weekend is Chicago versus LA in Chicago. Ring ceremony, May sixth. Um, Candace playing her old team. Yeah, I was about to say she's not. LA is a whole new lead. team. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Chicago is going to be a really exciting, really exciting to watch this year. I I'm not sure when Kalia Copper gets back from her overseas commitments. I I'm not sure if she's actually making it for opening weekend. It might be right after. So they might be without Kalia, but I still think it's going to be a really fun game to watch. Yeah, definitely. I'm excited to see, to see them come back, especially off of that championship run. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say on Friday too, I'm definitely looking forward to, um, Phoenix and Vegas. Um, like you said, like Phoenix now having Tina Charles, um, Vegas, you know, with the new head coach, um, you know, everybody, I feel like every, well, almost every team has a lot of new pieces now that they're mm -hmm. trying to implement that are like super exciting. Um, yeah. and so opening weekend, like I'm gonna have my eyes glued, uh, to see how everything plays out. Obviously it's super early on. So a lot of people mm -hmm. are still building and working out the kinks and everything, but, yeah. um, Definitely excited to see to see that matchup. Yeah, well, um, everyone here listening, you know, make sure to tune in. It's gonna be a fun weekend. I know you, you know, Jay and I will be watching and texting each other, and you know, in our group chat, like talking all, all the all the all mess, the tea, all the all the, mess. Tea, all the mess, all the good stuff, being like, you know, what's going on? You know, it's, it's my favorite part of the game, if I'm honest. <laughs> Same. I live for um, the tea. I live for the tea. I live for the tea. But you know. Let's go ahead and get into it. We have a really special guest today in uh, one of the teams we actually mentioned as one of our favorites for the finals this year in Con from the Connecticut Sun. We have Jasmine Thomas. So we will have her on next. Uh, and we are really looking forward to, to seeing what she's got to say about this season. What's going on, Jasmine? Welcome to Get With It. How you doing? I am good. Just got out of practice. Uh, didn't want to be late, so I rushed to get in here. Hope I look okay. <laughs> oh, I see you. You, you got that. You, you looking good. You came right in. just late. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, I mean, I got to start first. You know, when did you get back to Connecticut? You know, how long have you been back? And, and how was your overseas season? 
Um, I have been back in Connecticut for a week, a little over a week. Um, got back from Turkey two weeks before that. Um, so pretty much a quick turnaround, um, but wanted to, to come here and get settled, be a voice and a, um, you know, add another leader, another piece that's been here to training camp. So, Well, talk Definitely. to us a little bit about like kind of that transition, you know, such a quick transition, like what it's like not only playing overseas, but living there and then having to like quickly come back to the States and like transition to, you know, that different, you know, what may be a different lifestyle. Um, I mean, it's definitely hard. I think the hard part is the obvious part, no rest, you know, not really being able to have that downtime to decompress, to be with family, to, um, you know, rest any kind of nagging things that might be going on. You just, you know, put your bags, switch from seasons, your clothes, take out the sweaters and the coats and, you know, put your summer clothes in and then you are on to the next thing, but you get used to it. You know, I think that's where I'm fortunate here coming to a, you know, an organization that I'm comfortable with. Playbook doesn't change too much. The philosophy doesn't change much. So it's just refreshing my memory. I mean, you got to talk to us a little bit. Give us the inside light, like, look, all that stuff into what it's like living in Turkey. Like, what's uh-huh. the scene? You know, listen, yeah. I know you guys are doing a little more than just playing basketball. So <laughs> what's it like over there in Turkey when you guys are playing? Turkey is actually a lot of fun. It is a really hospitable country. So it's nice playing there. They're very welcoming and, you know, helpful toward us. I've had nothing but good experiences there. I love the food. Um, Istanbul is one of my favorite cities in the world. So the nightlife is fun. The shopping is fun. The food is incredible. Um, So, and it's a lot of Americans playing over there. It's a lot of us, not just WNBA players, which there are a lot of us there too, but it's just a lot of import players that can really connect and get together. So, you know, COVID has made things challenging, but when we can, we find times to, you know, get a bite to eat, go to hookah spots. Like, you know, it's really a good place where you can have fun off the court as well. That's good. That sounds lit. So like, tell us a little bit kind of like what's about how it's like, you know, playing with your teammates, you know, with Dewana. And also playing against like some of even competition like overseas, what that is like compared to like playing during the W season. What what's the inside tip? That does that prep you? Cause I know you are scouting them as you're getting, you're playing with them. <laughs> I know. I mean it- that comes with it. You really do get to know each other as players and people. So you do bring that to the scout when you have to, you know, play against each other. But um, for the most part, when you're playing over there with them, it is so helpful when you have a team of experienced, talented players, it allows you to not have to kill your body and, you know, play a ton of minutes and have that pressure all on you. You kind of spread it out. You guys, you know, we all kind of had a level of experience that just made it really fun to play together. Um, we didn't finish the way we wanted to. That's also part of it. But um, I really had a good time playing with DB and getting to know her, um, you know, just more outside of Connecticut. You know, when you're in the States, you have your own comforts, you have your own things that you can do. So, you know, when you're overseas, you really rely more on, you know, having your teammates be cool. So I love her. She's still over there. I can't wait till she comes back. Um, but yeah, that was cool having her on my team overseas. And then I played with Tip before. I played with her in the W in Atlanta. Um, and then I played with her in Poland, her and Temi. So it was nice having our little, you know, connection back together. Um, they've obviously developed so much more as players and they are just incredible um, since we last played together. But They're just great, great, great people, like great energy, great to have around on a team. Um, They're grown up leaders. It's crazy. Like I'm getting (laughs) old sometimes. I I like to like try to blend in. Like, no, you're not. No, I'm old. (laughs) They have grown up, but um, we really had a good time. And I'm, you know, still rooting for them over there. They're in the playoffs now. So, I mean, hey, you you brought home a Turkish cup yeah. and the perfect way, but you, you still did some things over there. Now, you mentioned you, y'all, you know, hit up the hookah spots. You went out to eat all that good stuff. What were the, listen, I got to know, there was some karaoke. There were some things singing. Who who grabbed the mic when it was time to? <laughs> um, who would have grabbed the mic? I don't, I didn't go to a karaoke, <laughs> but I know for sure Timmy would have grabbed the mic. Um, Bonnie was the DJ. So anytime we got okay. together, she got, like, she was a real DJ. Got the tunes going, felt the room. If, it, if a song got everybody moving, she would stay in that decade. <laughs> like, she was the DJ. Um, the decade. But we also played a lot of, like, drinking games. We were just, like I said, COVID made <laughs> It tough, so we would try to. We were lucky in Mercer. We had like a um, 
I don't know, like this thing that the president built onto the training facility. And it was mm-hmm. just like this nice place with like a bar, a fire pit, like a lounge area. A lot of us were posting about it when we got a chance to go. Mm. So we would just have everybody together and play just games with each other. And it got it got heated because we're competitive, but it was also <laughs> a lot of fun. That's what we love to hear. Who won, though? Mm, don't get her on the line on no here. Don't get her line. I, know, yeah, I wish I could get on here and lie, but you know, people see it and be like, no, she knows she capping. Um, I don't know. I feel like Z was really good at games like Uno, um, Temi, especially the games where it's like dare or drink or things like that. Like, you know, Temi is really outgoing. So she would kind of get everybody in those. Feel so, you. I have to ask because I'm a huge foodie. Um, and I haven't had a chance to go to Turkey, but I've ha- heard so many great things about it. What's like your go to like meal when you when you travel overseas when, in, the first in Turkey, thing, even without a meal in Turkey, the rice like mm. they have the best rice. When I first started playing over there and I wasn't really sure about the food, I was just like, if I can't eat nothing, please make sure I have a rice. plate of rice like <laughs> that. It is the best rice ever. Um, and then they eat a lot of it's Mediterranean food. So a lot of mm-hmm. like meats that you can like mix with the rice or the pita or like some bread. And then they have the salads like that's my favorite type of food. So I actually eat Turkish food more than I would eat out. OK, I mean, okay. listen, hey. We both foodies, me and Jay. So yeah. we, we love that for you. We, listen, a plate of rice can't go wrong. I'm Puerto Rican. That's like my bread and br- <laughs> yeah. bread and butter to say, to say in an uh-huh. in interesting way. So I feel you. But, um, you know, switching gears a little bit, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about last season before we even get into this <laughs> season. Yeah. I mean, you guys had an, another incredible run in the semifinals. You know, talk to me a little bit about last season, what you saw, what you guys accomplished, and now how you hope to take that momentum into this year. Um, I mean, last year we did a lot of great things. You know, it's always disappointing how you finish because that's the end goal is to win. Mm-hmm. In your last game, you wanted to be a win and we weren't able to do that. So obviously you look back on it and you feel a lot of disappointment. But when you really dissect it and see all the you know great things we're able to do, still had a great home record. That's been something that we've really been known for is being tough to play at home. So something we definitely want to continue doing. Mm-hmm. You know, we had a three all-stars, coach of the year, MVP, most improved, like, you know, just everything. The list goes on. Yep. Mm -hmm. We really had like a very, very, you know, talented team, obviously. Um, And just, I don't know. It's one of, it's another one of those seasons where it's like, we had it, like it was supposed to happen. We have a lot of seasons like that, where it's like, it could have been, it should have been, we wish it would have been because it just felt going all in the right momentum. We had these long win streaks, getting the seating that we wanted and just kind of fell short. Now, granted, Chicago was playing amazing as a super, super mm-hmm. talented team as well. So it's not like, um, you know, we weren't going to have our, our work cut out for us, but um, fortunately bringing a lot of that same talent mm-hmm. and roster back here, um, also had a, I mean, we want to call it a breakout year by Natisha. I don't know if you can, cause I feel like every year she has done That's better and better yeah. easily can be a, a most improved candidate every season that she's been in the league. So, um, you know, I'm just excited that we have those pieces back and that, um, everyone gets to step in and, and take a bigger role and have more, um, to give. And on top of that, can't leave out having Courtney back huge mm. part of our 2019 exciting player, great teammate. Um, just a, was a huge piece of what we did here and our style of play had changed a little bit. So that's why I'm saying it's, it's good to have everybody in camp right now where we're trying to, everybody yeah. with TV, we miss TV, of course, but <laughs> um, really trying to get that chemistry back and get it going and, and figuring out how we can put both of those styles, the way we played in 2019 and the way we played last year together. Mm, I hear that. Yeah. You talked so much about just kind of like how special you all squad is for real. Like, what would you say is kind of, and you talked a little bit even about like having Courtney back, like what are you most looking forward to out of this squad this season? You know, maybe even compared to last year coming back off of such a, a such a good run. Um, I mean, I think just finally getting over the hump, you know, like talking about it so much, you, you gotta, you gotta put it out there. You gotta let everyone know whether it's individually or just as a team, like that's the goal. The goal is to win a WBA championship. So, you know, we talked about it so much. It's just kind of like, we really can't talk about it no more. We got to just, just do it. it. We, everyone period. knows that that's something that, that we 
should be able to do, but we have to be able to put those pieces together all the time. And that's, you know, playing our best basketball in the right moments. That's handling the pressure. That's, you know, putting our pieces together and, and really playing, um, you know, everyone to their, to their best level uh, and giving everyone the opportunities and the support and the confidence that they deserve so we can thrive in those moments. And I think, um, you know, been a lot of, a lot of heartbreak in our locker room year after year. I think we're tired of it. Yeah, I hear Walking that. with that Listen, chip on your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's the energy you got to go into the season with. And and I think that's what makes me so excited about you guys is um, you guys have such a special team adding Courtney Williams back. Um, a lot of that energy that's going to, you know, bring to that, a lot of the swag that's going to be brought back mm-hmm. to the court. And, and one of my favorite parts is I think we've seen in the most recent years, and I'm sure you felt, Things I got a little spicy down on the court these days. You know, yeah. I mean, I'm with the spice. I love I'm it. With it. Yeah, I, I love, love it. it. <laughs> yeah, it really has. I mean, the league is just, it's getting more and more talented, more and more competitive every year. Um, we had an extreme, we'll still have an extremely competitive and talented camp. Um, you're seeing it all around the league. It's just, it, it's tough. It, it's mm-hmm. really tough. But like you said, it's, it is spicy. Like everybody is, you know, really coming in, asserting themselves, like, you know, demanding to be seen, demanding their opportunities. And it, I don't know, it's, it's fun to watch. And I think it's what's taking the game in the right direction. We just need some more spots, some more teams. So, so. I was, I was about to head that, in that direction next, but before get into we get it. there, <laughs> you beat me to it. But before we get there, I want to ask you kind of coming off of last year, who are you most excited to see play and play against this year I could be either on on Connecticut or pl- someone you're playing against um because I just think so much talent is out there and people are mm-hmm. just getting better year over year the young ones even some of the vets are still playing at such a high level so yeah mm-hmm. who, who are you most excited to play against um I mean I'm probably biased but Nia Cloudin, our rookie mm. has been very impressive and uh she's smaller than I thought she was you know I don't but she's sh- so shifty dynamic score like I'm really excited to see how things work out for her especially being with you know with an experienced team uh you know things can go kind of either way with how plan time works but just how she's been like handling the aggressiveness you know when you're a rookie and you're coming in and you're talented like people are going to get physical with you they're going to challenge you and she has a great attitude she's really quiet but she she soaks it up she doesn't really make the same mistakes twice and I'm just really really excited to see what she does and then of course, you're always excited to see what the number one pick does. So, Ryan, I hate messing up names, but Ryan, 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 Ryan. Ryan. Yeah, <laughs> I'm really excited to see how it, how it goes for her, especially going into an organization with a lot of changes um, mm. under Tanisha, who I'm really excited for her opportunity as a head yes. coach. Like, I think um, it'll be exciting down there in Atlanta. So I'm excited to see her. Definitely, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, just with Nia being, I went to University of Maryland, so her being a Big Ten uh, product, I'm excited to see DMV, what she does DMV with- gang. I've got the DMV gang here. <laughs> um, I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see what she does with y'all, too. But, um, you know, let's get into it. You talked about it a little bit, but, you know, just with how competitive the league is, um, there's a lot of young players that we're seeing kind of see the side effects and feeling the effects of that. What's kind of your message to them, whether, you know, it be in camp or, um, you know, just, you know, pl- players that you've seen or like played against that, you know, maybe seeing or feeling the effects of, you know, how competitive the league is and, you know, the need for expansion. What would, we, what would you say is your message to them? Um, it's a similar message. I feel like as always, no matter what you're doing, it could be sports, it could be anything that you're doing, it, you know, a no is not necessarily a never, you know, Mm. so it's kind of just like every opportunity that you get, you can't really be focused on the outcome. You got to put the work in during the process, during the journey. So these days of camp showing out every day, you know, you you might feel good about how you performed and feel frustrated and confused on why you didn't end up on a roster, but all those things, everybody talks in this league. There's so many coach GMs. There's so many GMs that come and watch practice. Like everybody is seeing, you know, what you're able to do. So it is very, we've seen a lot of stories. We have a, a great story here on our team with Natisha. It's like, mm. you know, sometimes you get waves. Sometimes it doesn't work because of the business. Sometimes it, you know, that's another aspect that, that play, young players might not understand enough of is the CBA and how that, that the cap and all this other stuff mm-hmm. works. Um, just take, take advantage of your opportunities. When you get in those preseason games, 
ball out do do and that doesn't necessarily mean score all the points you know what I mean and just like throw the ball up it means really assert yourself as a professional show that you understand the game at this level show that you can be on the bench watching what's happening and get in and make an impact and I feel like here especially in Connecticut we had a lot of players that were able to do that and you know it still didn't work out so it's like you've been seen you've proven you can play People know what you can do, and everybody is looking to fine tune their rosters early in the season and toward the middle, all the way up into that deadline. Mm-hmm. So you got plenty of time. Just stay ready. Don't be at home. Just in your feelings, discouraged. Stay ready. It happens every year. People get picked up every year. Yeah. Your your no. name is in rooms you don't even know it's in. Yep. Exactly. And no is not a never. I'm putting that on my. That's a new I'm mantra. That, yeah, that's, that's a mantra. <laughs> that's a, that's mantra. a mantra. Yeah. One day we're, we're writing that one down. Um, yeah. and, I, and I love to hear that because, I mean, it's so true. We see so many players in this. I mean, Benajah Laney, another person who waved, wasn't on a team for almost, what, two years? I mean, and then she goes in Atlanta, hoops out. Now she's in New York, you know, one of the one of their leading scorers. So there's so many stories like that across this league. And, and I know you mentioned it. You hinted at it. You know, the need for expansion is there, the need to. And I think actually Christina Williams made a good point the other day was, you know, before we talk about expansion, we should talk about expanding roster spots. So from 12 to 15 or, you know, um, you know, fluctuating in that Easier realm. to do that. Easier that's to do easy, that. That's something yeah. that's exactly something easier that to be done. So I love that point she made because I think it's so true. We, we have too much talent and we don't want to be, you know, fall and the W doesn't want to fall into, you know, losing that talent just because, you know, again, in the business of it all, there might not necessarily be a spot in that exact moment, but Hey, you never know. You never know when you're going to get picked up. But I think the most exciting that thing that we've seen, at least for me is I think in the last two years, and I was worried because I thought the pandemic, you know, might impact this in some way, shape or form. We've seen a lot of momentum in women's sports and the growth of it across basketball, soccer, boxing even. I mean, we saw a huge fight on Saturday night, which was really exciting. I think one of the most exciting women's boxing matches we've seen in a, in a while. Um, and so I kind of want to ask you, and not even that, also the NCAA players now making a bag. Like, it's it's crazy to see. I mean, <laughs> it's wild. <laughs> would, have, would have been nice, right? A couple years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Couples. I'm about a decade or so. <laughs> don't age yourself. Don't age yourself. No, don't we age yourself. We're no not knows. telling nobody. Right. No, we're not telling we're not nobody. nobody. This is a safe <laughs> space safe space <laughs> but uh how have you seen it evolve over the years and especially now at this point in your career um like where it's at now almost like looking at it through a lens right because if you've seen it where it was like where have you seen it and how have, far have you seen it come um I have seen it come far just even within the WBA from when mm-hmm. I first got into now um but the thing with women's basketball is it's never been the product Women have always been talented. The game evolves and changes, you know, so of course it it looks different. The skill set looks different. That's it's supposed to change over time. But the thing that we are witnessing happening right now is marketing. We have been begging and scrapping and calling for investment and marketing and branding for years and years and years. And it's honestly taken our young kids on social media doing it for themselves for it to actually take mm-hmm. off. You know, we've taken these like individual athletes who found the model to market themselves through their opportunities, through their, their social following. And now it's, it's everyone is kind of like looking like, well, you know, that works. You got this like 12 year old that has over a hundred thousand followers. And, you know, she, she got people wanting to work with her and wanting to follow her and wanting to see where she's playing. She's not even in high school yet. You know, why can't this work? for Mm. professionals why can't this work in college so Mm. I think it's it's you know from the top down everybody is just finally investing in marketing and telling stories and branding women's athletes the way that we have deserved for forever facts period that's that's big facts um (laughs) and I think that like Camille was saying and especially in the last couple of years we've seen it evolve so much that It's almost like I get even more excited than ever every time like the new season rolls around because you really don't know like what's next, like Mm -hmm. how, you know, who's going to sign, you know, a new brand deal that may may have never been signed before or, you know, what are the different opportunities that may come um, that Mm -hmm. we may not have seen. So, you know, we're just a few days away from the start of the season. Um, You guys are going to be playing. to think about. Yeah. It (laughs) It it rolled around way too fast. Um, just give us a little bit of insight and not too much because, you know, the, you know, the girls are listening. But 
What can we expect from you and the Connecticut Sun Squad this year? Um, I mean, you know our roster. You know how everyone plays on our team. So you know the talent that we have here. I think for the most part, it's just our identity. We uh, are going to hang our heads on defense again. That's something that we always strive to do is to lock in mm-hmm. defensively and really you know, try to be a problem for teams on the defensive end and then play to our strengths. We're, we're always going to play through our all-stars down there in the paint and then everyone else just being confident and, you know, playing good basketball. And, uh, you know, like I said, we're really trying to blend a lot of styles into one, um, but we know we know where our all-stars are. So we're, we're really going to, I think, play some exciting basketball. And I just think, I don't know, I feel like we got a lot of depth. Mm-hmm. For sure. I mean, listen, that, that roster, I think t- from 1 to 12, 1 to 15, wherever it's at right now, I mean, it's looking great. I'm so excited for next season. But you know what I'm also more excited about? The tunnels. You know, listen, listen, listen. We're here to talk. We're here to talk some of that. Because <clears throat> So before yes. I even get into it, no, no, no. Before I even get into it all, I'm not even kidding. I had someone ask me, like, do you have a player that, like, you would – like say like that's like my style and like that's like someone like I get it I literally said Jasmine Thomas like without a doubt without even hesitation I was like Jasmine Thomas she gets my vibe every time she always got these beautiful amazing fits and she's been doing it for I mean a minute because that's the other thing you were one of the I would say leaders in this when it started what four three years ago when we started really seeing a shift Mm -hmm. in that pregame tunnel effect so first of all I before we even get into all you know where do you get your style inspiration from and how would you describe your style? Um, I feel like I would describe my style as kind of like versatile. I think that's the best thing I can say. Like I will wear sweats with heels. I will mm-hmm. wear, you know, Love it. I will just wear sweats with sneakers, but crop my top and now it looks like an outfit, you know, like it's, um, I don't know. I just feel like whatever I'm feeling that day, if I want to be cozy, but make it pop, I just find a way to do it. I feel like I'm always on Instagram or like Pinterest, like the people I follow, that's all I see is our outfits, new mm-hmm. release handbags, shoes, like clothes. I just love shopping and clothes. So I'm just, but for me, you know, sometimes I see stuff on other people. I'm like, damn, that's dope as hell, but I can't pull that off. So <laughs> I don't track it, you know, <laughs> I hear you. but, um, but yeah. And I just feel good when you show up to the game and you got that confidence going already and you feel good about your outfit, you know, mm-hmm. it just puts you in the right mindset to just carry that right into the game. Hey, look good, feel good. That's a real yes. thing. Yes, and you look play good, good. You play good, and you get paid good. Yep, <laughs> and you get paid good. <laughs> no, but yeah. I really love how you talked about just kind of like the switch up. Like you really give the girls flavors for real. Like you said, like whether it's chill but make it cute, comfy, make it cute. Like you just give versatility like mm. through, with yeah. every single fit so I love I'm that I'm gonna try to be a little fancier this year though I, I was just getting ready like, to say know, like, I like I was chilling last year I got a few fits <laughs> pulled them off I was like damn I actually made it but I was chilling you know I wasn't trying to oh, do whatever shit. Okay. but now they putting the pressure on so I got to come back <laughs> listen she said y'all thought I was bringing heat last season y'all just wait that wasn't even my best yet. Well, I guess we can get into that too. Like, what can we expect from you in the tunnels this year? Like, do you have, you know, like a certain trend or vibe that you're like feeling this season? Or is it kind of just like wake up and this is how I, I'm feeling this, how I'm coming? I'm coming. It's always going to be that. <laughs> but what's in my closet, like I've got, um, shopped a lot with like the Zara kind of oversized pantsuits mm. like I really like that where you can you know change the tops but you really got the cinch waist with the pleats and the wide legs like I think that looks super cute and you can dress it up or dress it down mm. plus my teammate Christina Nigway you know she dropped her clothing line so I bought uh, every item she had so <laughs> Period. I told her I'm gonna be trying yes. to throw some pieces together all summer so I am really really excited about it I love, I actually was about to just ask you about that. I mean, Christina Newey dropping her own K originals. Yes. Little pl- subtle plugs. Shameless plug. Um, <laughs> little plug. Uh, so, uh, line, I mean, so incredible to see a, a, a young player who not only, um, mm-hmm. you know, is focused on her basketball career, but has really um, invested in her personal career outside of it. So what was that process like for you kind of seeing it as someone who also enjoys fashion and loves, you know, shopping and all the clothes and everything, yep. you know, kind of watching her go through that. And then not only that, but modeling it once she did announce it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just really see how, hard she's working like she's really true to this like studying getting swatches of fabric and like 
you know, in Turkey, like going to places, like testing it out, feeling it out, like putting sample pieces together and fitting it on people and then sending it to her people to actually put into production. Like she was waking up at like six, seven, eight in the morning doing calls, like working up until practice, then coming to practice, doing her thing, and then going back to work again. Like she really has two full time jobs. And mm. it's incredible to see her, you know, be successful at both of them and knowing that when she's done playing basketball, she really would have built a fashion empire. Like she is really like that. It's incredible. It's talent. Yeah. Man. And as we, you kind of, we talk a little bit about like designers and stuff. We got a little game that mm. we want to play with you. You know, the Met right. Gala was last night. So we want to just get kind of like your overall thoughts on, uh, you know, what, how you thought everyone came, you know, fitted with the theme. Um, and, you know, what's your your idea of, you know, the looks from last night? I wish I would have looked a little more because <laughs> I didn't really see too many of the fits. I was too worried about Roe v. Wade and I was yes. in a whole different direction. But I will say I saw Chloe. Is it Chloe? Uh, Chloe and Hallie? Chloe, sisters, Chloe, Kim. Chloe mm-hmm. her little yellow. Oh, Chloe Hall. Yes. Yes, that was nice. Um I don't know. I saw a few of them that really stood out. Somebody had like a lime green, um, like piece yes, on. It was. Like I did see that. Yeah, I thought I like things that like stand out and pop. So that was it for me. And Gilded Age was the theme, right? Yeah, I, yes. I don't even know what that is. So I had to go like, look it up. I don't know if people are on the theme or not. I couldn't. <laughs> I remember studying the Gilded Age in school, but like for fashion, I was like, oh. I don't even know if I understood the assignment, so I don't know if I can judge y'all on the assignment. But once I like looked it up a little bit, I was like, okay, I saw, I see where you were going here a little bit, a little bit. What is it though? Is it like, I don't know. It's not like Bridgerton, right? Like what is it? It's technically like supposed to be late 19th century, early 20th, all Um, that, all that good stuff. But I was reading a little more on it, which by the way, you're very right. How insane is it that Roe v. Wade and everything happens while we have like the richest of the rich it's always like dressing that. up in costume like it's always a distraction like right mm-hmm. on time <laughs> yeah no it really it really truly is and I mean listen I think it's unfortunate I mm-hmm. no, there's not much to do other than pray for the best and and then now start you know putting our 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 our, our fight our fighting words on because this this ain't yeah. about to go down on our watch no uh no. it is not not if any of the women in this country have anything to say about it um but you know i want to get into our game to you know get you out of here i know you got a lot of things you're okay. a busy woman um so we're gonna play a little bit of game a game called that's a w or it's a dub all right so i'm gonna show we are gonna talk to you about a fit i think i sent you the photos you got them no where oh. I'll send them to you right now. I've got them. I'll send okay. a little. I'll send them to you via Instagram. But basically, what we'll do is you'll so we'll talk to you about a fit. You'll have the photo and you'll tell me that's a W, meaning you like it, or okay. it's a dub, meaning you're not you're not with it. And okay. and I and I did a further research on what the theme for last night was because apparently it was continued from last year's Met Gala, which is part two. In America, um, an anthology of fashion built around the tenets of American style and celebrating unhung, the unsung heroes of U.S. design. Very interesting, uh, since half the designers from last night were not American. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right? Like, you, you just got to laugh sometimes. All right, I'm going to send you these right now. Okay. And let's get it going. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's a DM, right, on Instagram? Yeah, I'm going to okay. DM it to you all. Um, okay. Let's go one at a time just because it'll be faster that way. All right. Mm -hmm. So first person up, Odell Beckham in in Cactus Plant Flea Market. Wait, I feel oh, there it is. Got it. Okay. Um, you know what? That's a W. That's a win. I kind of miss that too. I love I love Hunter Green. Like I'm Mm. on it heavy right now. I got walls in my house that color. I want my car wrapped that color. So that's a win (laughs) for me. Okay, okay, I'm with it. I'm with it. Okay, next up. How about Meg the Stallion and Moschino? Mm-hmm. Meg always wins. <laughs> she left no crumbs. That's cute. I like the shoulders. Mm-hmm. I like this. Yeah. Right, right. It's kind of fire. Mm-hmm. Okay, we got to go with uh, another fan favorite coming up next in uh, Russell Westbrook. 
to go. <laughs> it's you a know, reaction no, for me. Not, <laughs> <laughs> it's a reaction for me. For me, this is a dub. But a little, I guess, a little side note is I love the boldness. I love the courage. I love mm. the just doing different things and really going outside the box. I'm going to take it. But I don't really like this outfit. You know, okay. I'm with it because you're that. right. Because a lot of the dudes, especially at any event, they don't go for anything. It's like they play you, too like, safe. A, a, they put a black suit yeah. on and they call it a night. I'm like, come on, man. You got to go a little harder for that. Okay. I okay. just think about if I was their date, though. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like, if I'm showing up with you. I would not want to be standing would, next to this. I, we want to kind of match. And I don't I don't know. That's not why you're not <laughs> we both to got on skirts. On. <laughs> we both got on skirts now. Like. <laughs> Okay, next up, we've got uh, Jack Harlow and Givenchy. Yep, definitely a win. I saw his outfit. That one is one of the ones that came up on my feed. I liked it. Okay, okay. I'm with it. I'm with it. Uh, All right, next up, we got SZA. Hmm. Hmm. It's a toughie, right? It is, because I like the pink-ish fuchsia. No. It's a dub. It's a dub. Okay. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. All right, next up, we got D-Wade and Gab Union, both in Versace, I'm pretty sure. Yep. A win. A win. That's that's one of my favorite couples. That's a win. <laughs> they look beautiful. Just need Cobb on the red carpet, too. Like, we need Cobb there matching. No, for real. Giving all the shade. She would steal the show. (laughs) She 100% would. Exactly. They look good, though. Right? They look good. Mm -hmm. I'm with it. Okay. Next up, we've got Normani. Oh, wait. Wrong. Here we go. Coming up right there. You know, I like this one. I'll say that this is a win. And I'll say like the difference between like this and like SZA with the, the hat, cause she has a hat on too, right? Mm-hmm. I just feel like this one is more of like my style, something that I would be able to pull off. So I'm just like, it's cute. And I like the neck. I think like, I don't know, it's doing a lot with like the fluff, but then the neck is like real, I don't know. The neck like is very that. chic. It's getting mm-hmm. chic. Right? I like it. I'm, I'm with it. All yeah. right, next up. Billie Eilish in uh, Gucci. You know, I did not like this one. And Mm -hmm. I actually saw a different picture where she was like leaning over. And I think the caption was like, she was given like the angles, but Mm -hmm. I didn't think it looked nice. So I was like, I don't know. I to me, like it was more on brand, like on theme, sorry, oh, okay. than anything to me. But I, I agree that I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it either. Like, yeah, it's I just it, that's yeah. a tough one. I, I, I do agree. It's like the contrast with like the hair, like the dark, dark. Mm, hair. That is true know. in the pastel, like light mm-hmm. colors. OK, this one. Uh, next one up. OK, we've got Kylie Jenner and off white. Mm. I didn't even pick like that a baseball cap. I would cap? definitely like the dress, like the bottom of the dress. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it's like a it's fitting like a t-shirt or I don't know, it could fit better yeah. at the top. Yeah, well, it's got but, like a t-shirt overlapped with the back with the backward hat. I was like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's what I'm just peeping. The- yeah. And I don't know, maybe that's what they're going for. Is that kind of like laid back? I don't know. I love the bottom of the dress though. Like, I, okay. I really love that, but I don't know. I'm, I'm in between on this one. Yeah. yeah. Listen, I think I'm in between on basically everyone that we saw. This day, <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, I don't know more because, like you mentioned, we were worried about uh, bigger things happening, um, which hopefully, you know, don't happen, unfortunately. So, mm-hmm. well, Jasmine, thank you so much for being on with us today and excited to see you play this summer or this entire season and on Thank Fridays, you. Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Friday. It's Friday the 6th. I can't remember my dates. Yes. I think we play the 7th. Sad- so Saturday the 7th. Yep. Yeah. Listen, yeah. tip off in Brooklyn. You better be Brooklyn's tunnel fit. I'm ready. I'm. I know. Pressure's on. I got to start thinking. <laughs> I got to start trying fits on tonight. <laughs> well, but thank, thank you all for having me. Like, this was thank a great you conversation. For- a lot of fun. I appreciate it.
Well, fam, that's it. That's all we've got for today. Make sure to follow or subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. We will see you next week.